everyone. Welcome to the weekly live stream. I am so glad everybody on Instagram here is joining me and I'm so glad you guys on Facebook are joining me as well. Um, give me one second. I'm going to share this into the leather tamers. And guys, if you are watching this live, um, say hi. So I know you're out there and I'm not just talking to myself. Um, say hi in the comments and let me know where you're watching from. Okay, so we're now in the Leather Tamers as well. Hello, Leather Tamers. And um, I want to talk to you today about how you can shift your business from a hobby to an actual business. So maybe you're confused by that. So if you are currently trying to run a business, but it's still kind of feeling like it's a hobby, I want to talk to you about how you can shift that by focusing on some um, some key things, things like um, profits, focusing on profits and how to know what to focus on that's going to relate to bringing you more profits, um, comparing, comparing yourself to other leather crafters, um, really getting real about your customer. You know, it's not about you, it's about your customer, and um, also how to keep your overhead expenses low. So those are just a couple of things I'm going to be talking to you about. Um, this is awesome. So on Instagram, hi, everyone. We've got... Fretch Fay Knives, hello, hello. We've got Fogfish from San Francisco. We've got uh, Wales, UK. We've got uh, Nadia Kaya from Michigan. Uh, good day from Arkansas, awesome. Hello from Somerset, UK, awesome. UK in the house. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me. And um, for those of you who are joining me for the first time, I do these weekly live streams every week, pretty much every week. I feel like I'm pretty consistent with that. At 12 noon Eastern Standard Time, I'm talking about something related to your leather business. My name is Mary. I'm the creator of leatherbeast.com, and I help leather crafters just like you guys um, really take your business um, either start a, a new business selling your leather goods or take your existing one that might not be giving you the results that you quite want, not giving you enough sales, and really um, how to turn that into a thriving, profitable business. So I do that by focusing on a handful of things. Just quickly, I focus on clarifying your message, making sure you know what it is that you are selling to your customer and why they should need it, why they should buy it from you. This is very important to know. Um, and then how to drive that um, targeted traffic to your website and promote your leather goods to your um, ideal customer. Now, if that sounds interesting to you and you want to learn more, I'd like to invite you to watch the free workshop that I have. It's at lucrativeleathercraft.com and you can just sign up there and I'll email you the link uh, straight away and you can watch that. It is jam-packed full of info if you're just starting your business. Um, also, take the quiz while you're there. Um, you can take that at leatherbeast.com. So... Um, so I want to know how many of you guys feel like this is what's happening, that you are, tr you want to turn your hobby of uh, leather craft into a business, um, but you're not sure how, you're not really sure where to start. Raise your hands if that's you, if that's something that you are kind of where you're at right now, or um, how many of you are actively selling your work, although it still doesn't quite seem like a business yet. Maybe you're not selling enough to really cover the expenses. If that's anyone, raise your hand. Maybe, um, maybe you haven't quite turned that profit, right? Maybe you're still, you're selling a couple of things, but it's not quite covering the cost of materials or tools um, or even like your Etsy fees, all of those things that the cost of actually running a business. Um, so maybe you're not quite um, getting above that yet. Or if you ever have those days where, you know, it's the end of the day and you're like, what the hell did I even do today? What did I even accomplish? You know, did anything I do today 
actually contribute to the success of my business. That happens to me sometimes and I'm just like, hmm, okay, better luck tomorrow. Um, or if you're like, wow, cool, look at this wallet that I made. It's totally awesome. I love it. Why don't my customers love it? Um, so I got a couple hands. Yes, we have uh, Full Trod Leather. Hi from Canada. Nadia is giving us a hands up in the Instagram. Uh, Breach of Knives. My knives come with sheaves I make, but I'm getting requests for other leather goods now. That's awesome. Way to um, zone in on your target market, right? Give them what they want. Um, okay, so the point is you're not alone because I get emails from people all the time, people talking about ever since I started Leather Beast and I've um, started the blog, it's been about two and a half years now going on three. Um, and people write to me and they want to know how to like boost their business and what they're doing wrong in their business, um, how they can take their business to the next level. And the other day I got one of those emails and it was it was shocking to me, but tell me if you think this was shocking or if you think like, oh, that just comes with the territory, that's how it goes. But this person had been struggling to get their leather business off the ground for four years. They had little to no sales for four, that's it, four years, not eight. Um, do you think that's shocking or do you think that's normal? Do you think that that's what it takes? Do you think that, you know, that's just kind of comes with the territory if you're starting a leather business that maybe you think like there's no money in a leather business or, you know, there's no, um, there's no way around that. You have to really struggle for those, uh, for four years. Um, and the Facebook group, I've got Andreas. I haven't quit my day job yet, LOL. Okay, so maybe you feel like you have to struggle a little bit. Well, to me, that is shocking. And while I can definitely speculate exactly um, what was going on, either you know, not promoting effectively, maybe not promoting at all, there's a lot of people that really make this mistake surprisingly, or maybe he didn't know who his customer was. It could have been really anything. But starting a handmade business, a leather business, it, it's hard. It's a lot of hard work. But if you're not turning a profit after four years, you're definitely missing some key steps in your business foundation. You do not have to wait four years until you make a profit in your leather business. It's not, that's not just part of the territory. You don't have to struggle. So if that's you, um, reach out and get some help with that. So the reason why I'm telling you this story is not to make fun of this person or be mean to this person, not at all. It's just because I don't want you waking up four years from now and thinking, man, I haven't made a sale in four years. This whole business thing just isn't working for me um, because that is, uh, that's not true. So what I want to share with you today are a couple of the key things um, that really shifted my business from hobby to profitable business and have really allowed me to take it to the next level. And these are things that anyone can implement. You guys can implement this into your own business and you will see, um, you'll see some improvements. I got a couple more, um, comments over here. That's shocking, especially with social media and other things available these days. There's so many outlets. So true. I agree. It is shocking. Uh, I want to quit my day job and get this baby rolling. Awesome. I want you to too, because quitting your day job is the best. Um, no offense to anybody who loves their day job. That's cool too. But um, for me, it is awesome. Okay. So let's get into it. The first thing that really shifted for me was when I started to focus on my profits. Now, some people might think um, focusing on the profits sounds very corporate and it sounds like something you do when you already have a really big business, you know, when you're actually bringing in the profits, but that's not at all true. And that's not exactly what I mean. What I mean by focusing on the profits, even before maybe you have made a profit is focus on the things that you can do in your business that are going to bring you the profits. So think big instead of thinking small, um, especially if you're someone with kids or you have a family or, you know, these day jobs where you're working um, all day. I just had someone 
um, join the Leather Tamers who works a full-time job or takes care of his kids full-time during the day. And so he only is able to work on his leather business for a couple hours in the evening after they've gone to bed. So if you're someone like that where you only have a couple hours a day, even if you only have one hour a day, you better be making sure you're making really good use of that one hour, right? You don't want to be messing around with things that aren't really going to be moving the needle. So when you start focusing on the most important parts of your business, using that time to do that, that's when you're going to see bigger things happen in your business. And this is a total game changer for me when I started focusing on these parts um, of my business that were directly related to bringing in income and customers. So Instead of obsessing, you know, taking hours obsessing over a font for your business card or your website, focus on how you're going to drive the quality traffic to your website and how you can use social media better to form relationships and connections with your customer, how you can get in front of your customer and bring in that revenue. It's really all about um, taking your product, making sure you have a really clear way of talking about it, making sure it's very clear to the customer why they need it, how it's going to help them, what's the transformation, and then promoting your products. We all know that we can't just put something up online and sit back and wait. It's an active thing that you really need to be doing on a daily basis. So that's number one, focus on the big things that are really going to be directly related to bringing in your profits. Number two, stop comparing yourself with other leather crafters. And if you've listened to my previous um, live streams, you've probably heard me say this before. It's a big one and it's a reminder for myself as well because, you know, we can't really help it. We are always comparing ourselves to someone, whether it's someone we are in uh, direct competition with in our business or someone walking down the street that looks better than us. You know, we're always comparing ourselves. But, and so it's good to be aware of your competition and what other leather crafters are um, doing. But when you're obsessed with comparing yourself, you're really just kind of, it ultimately usually ends in, you know, you being discouraged or you feeling like you're not good enough or you just feeling like, oh, if they're doing that, I should be doing that too, when it just might not be the right thing for you at that stage in your business. So for me, me my one of my biggest challenges was that I felt like I had to keep up with the other leather crafters. Have you ever felt like that? Like you see people making this amazing work and these like amazingly complex designs and complex um, products. And so I felt like I had to, you know, do the same thing. Um, forgetting the fact that most of them had probably been at it for years um, before I had even picked up my first stitching clam, you know, or picked up my first like stitching needles. So um, you really have to just remember that anyone that has success now, like overnight, overnight success just doesn't happen. Like they've been at it for years in, in previous to where they are right now. Um, and when I realized this, I felt better about where I was on my own path and, um, and my own sort of self doubt decreased. So I was able to kind of be like, okay, that's where they are. That's a nice like aspiration, try and get there, but I'm not going to be like, why aren't I there yet? So be aware of your competition, be aware of what other people are doing, but keep your eyes on your own path ahead of you and really stay focused on what you're doing for your customer. Even if the person down the road is making the same exact thing as you, don't get all caught up in that because they're not going to market it the same way as you are. They're not going to talk about it the same way as you are. They're not going to talk about their brand the same way as you are. You bring your own personality to that same leather good and it's a it can be a completely different audience okay number three uh i just realized that i titled this uh blog post three ways but there's actually four ways okay number three um this is one of my favorites get real about how you can help your customer so the most important thing that you can focus on in your business is your customer right because without your customer you don't have a business. 
you have a hobby. <laughs> and that's exactly the title of this live stream, taking it from hobby to business. And so when you do that shift from a hobby to a business, you need to shift your focus as well. Um, you can't just keep making everything that only you want to make and expect other people to like it and want to buy it just because you like it. Um, so you really have to get in the mind of your customer and change your perspective. Um, and if you can't figure out who your customer is and you've tried and, you know, this is something that I talk about a lot in Lucrative Leathercraft, my um, program that I'm going to be opening the doors to very soon. But we talk about this a lot in the very first section because it's all about your customer. It's so important. But if you have a product and you can't figure out who the customer is, then it's probably because either number one, your product is kind of vague and that's not a problem um like maybe you just sell those wallets those wallets that like everybody makes that's fine you need to figure out though how you're going to like i said before how you're going to market that sort of general product in a different way than everybody else is that's really the only way that you're going to be able to get ahead and step out in front of your competition so um so think about who you want your customer to be. You can think about it that way as well. If your product doesn't solve this very specific problem for a very specific group of people, just pick a group of people and start marketing to them. But it needs to be a consistent thing. It needs to be all over your brand. It needs to be on your website, in all your emails, on across all your social media. But pick that specific group of people the people that you think will want your product and start marketing to them. Um, and this is how you create that profitable business, right? And make sales. You find out who your customer is, what they want, and then you deliver what they want to them, period. That's really all there is to it. And number four, one of my favorites because I am a penny pincher and um, I enjoy being frugal and streamlined with my money. Keep your overhead low, especially when you're just starting and you're just transitioning from your hobby into a business. It's so tempting to go out and be like, oh, I need a brand new camera to take product photos. Um, I don't have one. I'm still borrowing, borrowing my uh, boyfriend's camera because he has a really nice camera and I take a lot of my photos on my iPhone. That's just how it is. Um, and you want to go and buy like new tools and all this like new material, but you really want to keep your overhead super low until you start to have sales and start generating money in your business. Um, so even once I started making my sales, I kept my overhead low because I knew that that revenue, some of it had already been spent, right? It wasn't all profit because I had upfront costs like buying leather and materials. So even when I uh, sold a bag for 300 bucks, that 300 bucks was not just going into my pocket. About a hundred of it had already been spent on materials, you know, and then you really want to try and reinvest as much as you can into your business. I used to laugh actually, cause my boyfriend, it's kind of this like running joke now of when either one of us runs into some, some extra cash, you know, we're like, Ooh, is it time to go out for a steak dinner? Um, so he would always say that to me after I sold a bag and I would be like, no, we can't because that's not how that works. <laughs> um, it would really be nice if all of it was profit, but it's not. Um, so really what I did was I purchased only what I needed to create things that I knew my audience wanted and that would bring in the revenue um, as I started to make those sales. So then I started to upgrade my tools as I needed and buy my materials in bulk, you know, buying more leather at a time so you can sh save on shipping costs or save on um, the cost of the leather itself. And that is how you actually start to see that profit and really build your business without digging yourself into a deep hole. Because when I started my business, I had literally had like 500 bucks in the bank and I was trying not to touch any of it because I was unemployed and yeah, I was like in my 20s. So that's something you can do when you're in your 20s, be down to your last $500. But still, you can start a business on a very small amount of money these days. 
So, so those are my tips. When you are in the beginning stages of your business and you're trying to shift from the hobby to your, you know, it's shift from your expensive leather hobby um, to a profitable, thriving leather business. You want to keep your eyes on those things. You want to keep your eye on the profits from the very beginning before and every, every task that you do in your business, before you do it, think to yourself, is this going to help me achieve profits in my business? Is this going to bring in money? Is this directly related to bringing in more money to my business? If it is, then do it. If it's not, maybe put it lower on the list. Next, be efficient with your limited time and planning because we're all busy, but that doesn't mean that we can't use our time wisely and make the most of it. Um, don't get caught up in comparing yourself with other leather crafters, where they are in their business. There are no overnight successes and chances are they've been at it for years. So keep your eyes on your own work. And finally, keep your overhead low in the very beginning. Don't spend a lot unless it's absolutely necessary and it's going to help you bring in more money for your business. So if you do these things, you will be well on your way to shifting your leather hobby to um, a profitable leather business. Um, so guys, that is my four tips. And I'm curious if you think you can shift your hobby to a profitable business, if doing some of these things might help you to do that. I think so. Um, I see some people in the Instagram think so as well. Some hearts. Thank you. Um, now, if you liked this video, please leave a comment, um, share it. If you're on Facebook, click the share button and share it with your um, Facebook friends. And don't forget to watch that workshop at lucrativeleathercraft.com. Um, I am taking that down very soon. I just haven't yet because I haven't had a chance. Um, and then there's also a quiz at leatherbeast.com. I just recently put that up and that's kind of fun. It's all about uh, determining what kind of a leather business owner you are. So take a quiz, takes like five minutes and it's pretty fun. Um, and finally, the last announcement, some of you have been asking, you've asked before um, for more advanced notice about when the next time Lucrative Leathercraft will be opening. And I mentioned it last week, but I'm going to mention it again here. It will be opening in about two weeks. I'm going to be opening up the doors. So um, anyone on my email list already, either through Lucrative Leathercraft or Leather Beast, gets first dibs on the course details. Um, so make sure you're on that list. If you're interested in taking your leather business to the next level um, and you'll get the, uh, the info at the very beginning about getting the VIP early bird specials. All right, you guys, thanks so much for tuning in this week and have a great holiday weekend for anyone here in the States. If you're going anywhere exciting, drop it in the comments. I'm headed out to West Texas to do a photo shoot for my leather bag line that I'm very excited about. Um, I'll be sharing a lot about that in the coming weeks. And yeah, that's it, you guys. I'll see you next week. Bye. Bye, guys.